So I've wanted a laser cutter for a while, but I have a problem. They cost a lot. Machines that are ready to cut when you get them can cost anywhere from $1,000 to even up over $10,000, which I can't really afford. You can get something like a K40 model, which is a 40 watt laser, and those uh, cost around $400. But for a lot of those, the machine itself is the only thing you get, and uh, a lot of the time they don't come with air assist, appropriate ventilation, or even a water cooling system. And the machines have a cutting area that can only cut things that are about as big as a piece of paper and they're unsafe but that feels hardly worth mentioning but it's not actually too hard to build a laser cutter from scratch and because doing that was going to save me a bunch of money that's what I did so I admittedly have a pretty bad habit of jumping into projects right away without doing nearly enough research beforehand that was definitely the case with this project I had in my mind that I was going to use a diode laser because those were the only lasers that I was really aware of at the time until I realized that diode lasers can barely cut like cardboard so this is when I discovered CO2 lasers. Now is probably a good time to explain the difference between CO2 and diode lasers. Diode lasers just use high powered light emitting diodes and focus the light down to a really small point using a focusing lens so it can cut stuff and CO2 lasers use big glass tubes that are filled with CO2 which use really high voltage to excite CO2 molecules which then produces enough light to vaporize material when focused using a focusing lens. CO2 lasers sound a lot cooler but they aren't literally cooler since CO2 lasers make light by basically superheating gas. They produce lots of heat, which is why you need water cooling. So then I had to plan on making a water cooling system as well, which was unfortunate because it would add to the total cost, which was something I was trying to reduce. And since CO2 tubes are so large, you also just can't connect them directly to a laser head, so you also need to buy mirrors and mirror mounting brackets to bounce the beam to the laser head instead. I eventually decided on a 40 watt CO2 tube because it was powerful enough to cut more than cardboard and it was also kind of cheap so I didn't have to worry about breaking it quite as much as I would if I'd got something like a 100 watt tube. I was still pretty careful with it though. Anyways, I think I've talked enough about lasers so now it's time to order some parts and talk about building the frame. The frame was actually surprisingly easy to put together. I just used a CAD model that I made earlier to cut some aluminum extrusions to the right lengths, bolted the pieces together, and added some of these gantry plates to the extrusions so the frame could move in the X and Y axes. When I first printed these, I thought they were tight enough on the linear rails to work, but while this was happening, it was like 100 degrees in my garage, which I guess caused the plates to expand and warp or something, and that made them really loose. So to fix this, I had to add some offset bolt things. I forget the name of them, but they angle the screws on the plates slightly so you can adjust how loose or tight they are on the rails. Anyways, I also printed some belt pulley mounts and used these to uh, install the belts. I also installed the stepper motors using some 3D printed brackets that I had designed. I feel like I should have more to say about this, but I honestly just don't. So I'm going to move on to the enclosure now. So I could have had all the electronics and laser tube in the open without any sort of enclosure, but considering that I'll be bouncing a 40 watt laser beam around using mirrors, I figured it would probably be a better idea to have an enclosure of some kind. So I cut out some pieces of plywood and screwed them together using pocket screws and then added a door to the machine with a big acrylic viewing window. I also added silicone to the corners to try and make the enclosure as airtight as I could. I think if I were to rebuild this I would have used some material other than plywood uh, because plywood warps pretty easily and isn't very accurate and it's also pretty heavy. I think I'd probably go with an aluminum extrusion frame with uh, some kind of siding stuff. I'm not really sure though. I also added a handle to the door and added some LED strips to illuminate the inside of the case for recording video. The next thing I did was try and get the stepper motors. But the board I used was an Arduino Mega with a Ramps 1.4 shield. I don't really know why I picked this because there are definitely better controller boards out there that are actually built for laser cutters. But at the time I guess I just thought it would be easier to figure out. I'm not really sure but I do think this is something that I might upgrade later on. And it wasn't very easy to figure out anyway. And after basically losing my sanity for two weeks trying to find the right firmware version and type for my machine, I finally stumbled across Marlaser, which is a Marlin based laser firmware that was built for exactly the thing I was doing. So after getting the stepper motors and other electronics wired, I uploaded the firmware and generated some G-code using a plugin on a program called Inkscape, and now it works great. Oh, and I'll have all the software that I'm using linked in the description below if anyone's interested. So cutting some materials can release toxic fumes. ABS plastic, for example, releases cyanide gas when it's laser cut, which is uh, something that I don't want to inhale. So I decided I was going to build an exhaust system that takes the air from inside the machine out a window using a fan and some flexible duct tubing. And I'm not going to cut ABS because 
because I'm not stupid, but I just wanted to use it as an example of something that is toxic when laser cut. So at first I was going to build this using two 24 volt computer fans, but I quickly realized that just using two of these to ventilate such a big area would never be practical for doing longer cuts that produce a lot of smoke. So I got this thing instead. It's a much larger fan that's actually designed to be used in air ducts, so it can move lots more air and I'm hoping this will be enough to suit my needs. Oh, and I also bought a four inch diameter tube and then I mounted the fan to the wall connected the tube to both sides of the fan, the window and the inside of the enclosure, and now I have a working ventilation system. And like I mentioned earlier, I also need a water cooling system for the laser tube. Because I was trying to make this as cheap as I could, I made the water cooling system as simple as I could to reduce some cost. I really just bought a five gallon bucket, filled it with distilled water, bought the tubing and submersible aquarium pump, and connected everything together. And after I install the tube, I'll have a working water cooling system. Now you might say, hey, maybe you shouldn't go for a low cost solution when making something that uses running water right next to literal kilovolts of electricity. And you are right, except that because the system is so simple, there's hardly anything that can go wrong. Unless I forget to plug in the pump, or the pump comes unplugged somehow, or the tubes get connected in any of the connection spots. So because laser cutting makes smoke, and smoke makes stuff dirty, you need to have an air assist system that pushes smoke out of the laser head and keeps the lens free of grime. I figured I could also make this as simple as possible, so I just connected a small nylon hose to an air compressor, clamped it to be always open, and connected the other end of the hose to the laser head. My air compressor also has this maximum airflow valve, which you can set so you can control how much air you want to come out of the nozzle. This was good because it meant I could easily set the air up to the pressure that I wanted. This is another thing that I think I'll upgrade later, but I think I'll just have to deal with this mess for now. Since it's about time we tested this, I think it's a good time to start talking about safety. And while you may not be convinced that I take safety seriously, I assure you that I do when it comes to my eyeballs. I saw a video once where a guy tested his laser cutter on a pig's eye, and the results were pretty terrifying. So I'm gonna take some safety measures by buying these safety glasses, which are specifically designed to block out the wavelength of light that my laser produces. I would demonstrate this somehow, but I don't really wanna ruin my new safety glasses or risk my eyes, so I, I guess we'll just have to take the manufacturer's word for it. Also, the voltage that supplies this tube is something like 10 kilovolts, and I don't know a ton about electricity, but I do know that that is enough to be pretty dangerous. So to get some tips on how to not die, I looked on YouTube, which is always where I go to find potentially life-saving information, and found a great explanation by some guy on how to properly ground a laser cutter. So then I only had a few more things to finish. I had to install the mirror mounts and laser, test the laser, align the mirrors, and install the focusing lens as well. Let's start with mounting the laser tube. I did this using some 3D printed brackets that I made and used some sticky weather stripping tape as padding. I connected these to the frame using some M5 screws and then added the tube itself. This was probably the most anxiety inducing part of this entire project, but I ended up installing it successfully without breaking anything, surprisingly. Then I connected the water cooling hose to both ends of the tube, making sure that the outlet side was facing up so the tube would be completely filled with water. Then did a quick test of the water cooling system to check for any leaks and tested the laser tube for the first time. And they work. After I got this working, I moved on to installing the mirror mounts. I had to try and make it so the mirrors were square and level with the rest of the frame, and so that they were all level with each other as well. When I got this correct, I started aligning the laser beam. I won't explain the whole thing here because it was a pretty lengthy uh, process, but essentially you just try and get the laser beam in the center of each mirror in every possible place on the laser cutter. Here it is uh, burning a rectangle in some plywood. I was very excited. Okay, the last thing I need to do is install the focusing lens, which will make the laser actually cut stuff instead of just burning. I took the lens out of its protective case and made sure it was clean, and then dropped it into the laser head, making sure that the convex side was facing up. Then I cut some stuff. I started with just a basic rectangle to find the right focal length and settings, and once I had that dialed in, I cut a bunch of other stuff as well.
So that's it. In total, everything in this machine cost me about $660, which is well below my $1,000 budget. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you have any good ideas for things I could cut with this, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing to support me. Yeah.